Hey friends, hey friends, hey friends, it's me Alana, welcome back to my channel. some flowers in a world full of weeds. Hey friends, it is me, Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. For this video, I am actually going to be talking about some of the fantasy I've been enjoying this year, but also some of the fantasy I would hopefully like to get to next. I have transitioned from like a heavily contemporary reader into a heavy YA fantasy reader. It's kind of crazy how this transition happened. I really wasn't expecting it. I read like two books in the spring and then I was kind of hooked <laughs> and I just haven't gone back if that makes sense. Like I'm still reading some contemporary but whenever I am interested in reading something right now it's mainly fantasy. It's really wild and I don't really know what else to say about it. But I wanted to talk about some of my favorite fantasy that I've read this year. They're probably not anything new because I have been talking about them all year. But I did also want to talk about some of the ones that I actually excited to pick up next. Hopefully sooner rather than later. So the first book I had that I really enjoyed and I'm actually excited to try and finish this trilogy. And that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This was just so good. I loved the complexity behind it, the fact that you're getting an insight into the mindset of superheroes and supervillains and you're not just getting a one-sided story and that you really got to fall in love with these characters and really get to know them and their insecurities and their fears. I'm really glad that I picked it up this year and I'm so excited to try and finish it because I feel like it's really going to be one of my favorite uh, trilogies. Next, of course, this one isn't a surprise, but I have An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This series has really kept me afloat this year. It's just made me love it so much and the characters, and I'm just so excited that I was able to pick this up and really fall in love with it. I've become so invested in this series, and it's I don't want to say it's rare for me to get really invested in a series, but it's really it's really rare for me to pass that level and be so invested that I'm like emotionally broken <laughs> because of things happening in a series and this is what it's been doing to me. And honestly, Sabatier is a new favorite. Anything else she writes, I will probably just pick up and be like, give it to me now because this is so good. This one is an, a new fave and it's probably my favorite book of this year and I knew it when I read it and that is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This book just hit so many points for me. The fact that it's a black girl and it's by a black author was one but the fact that it really delved into the idea that fantasy isn't just white it's black too and there's just so much more complexity to black girl magic if that makes sense. I don't know this is just my thoughts coming out but I just loved this so much and I think the author did such a good job and she took many elements that happens in a lot of fantasy that maybe don't happen as well as you'd wanted to and I feel like it happens so well in this and so it makes it even more of a powerful story and I just cannot believe that I have to wait till next fall to read the second book because literally chaos is gonna ensue and I'm just ready for it because she's really about to just like put her foot down on things and I'm just here for it. <laughs> just here for it. All right so those are some of the books that I've really been enjoying this year but here are some books that I'm actually excited to pick up as well. So the first book I have is Graceling by Kristen Kishore. I don't know why I picked this up, but I've seen some people talk about it and I have 
seen them enjoy it, so I'm actually really excited to see what it's about. I'm just gonna read the synopsis to you because I don't really know the synopsis and that's okay. Uh, it's, Katza has been able to kill a man with her bare hands since she was eight. She's a Graceling, one of the rare people in her land born with an extreme skill. As niece of the king, she should be able to live a life of privilege, but graced as she is with killing, she is forced to work as the king's thug. When she first meets Prince Po, who is graced with combat skills, Katza has no hit of how her life is about to change. She's never expected to become Poe's friend. She never expects to learn a new truth about her own grace or about a terrible secret that lies hidden far away. And I, that just, when I read it, I was like, wow, I don't know why, but this really hit me and I just want it and I'm excited to read it. But also this cover is just so pretty. I'm really excited to check this out. Next, we have The Immortal Rules by Julie Kagawa. This was recommended to me by my friend Carrie from Carrie the Book Bell. So I know it deals with vampires, but that's about it. I'm just going to read the synopsis to you and maybe you'll see why I was interested. So Allison Sakamoto survives in the fringe, the outermost circle of a Walden city. By day, she and her crew scavenge for food. By night, any one of them could be eaten. Some days, all that drives Allie is her hatred of them, the vampires who keep humans as blood cattle. Until the night Allie herself dies and becomes one of the monsters. Forced to flee her city, Allie must pass for human as she joins a ragged group of pilgrims seeking a legend, a place that might have a cure for the disease that killed off most of civilization and created the rabbits, the bloodthirsty creatures who threaten human and vampire alike. And soon, Allie will have to decide what and who is worth dying for. One, I love vampires. Two, I love vampires. So... I'm here for this. This is it. Like, that's that's all I needed to know, really. But, like, reading the synopsis, I'm like, yes. Someone trying to change back from a vampire? Yes. Someone having a worse enemy than the vampires? Yes. So, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Um, I tried reading Julie Saka Kagawa's Faye series, and I wasn't really a big fan, but I think that had more to do with the content because I'm not really a big fan of Faye stories. I don't know what it is, but anytime I try and read one, I'm really just bored or thrown off or whatever. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out. Next, we have The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. I've seen so many people talk about this book, so many people rave about it, and it just kind of clicked and I was like you know what I want this I want to check it out I want to see if I like it so I'm gonna go ahead and read the synopsis again Fi abides by one rule look after your own as the future chieftain of a shunned caste of mercy killers she relies on her wits and bone magic drawn from the teeth of dead witches to protect her band the crows take more abuse than coin so when they're called to collect the royal dead Fi hopes they'll find the payout of a lifetime when Fi discovers that crown prince jasmine and his crafty bodyguard tavin have faked their deaths to escape the ruthless queen rusana she's ready to cut her losses and perhaps her throats but jazz offers a deal that she can't refuse make sure he lives to see the throne and he'll protect the crows when he reigns to outrun and out with the queen the trio forge an uneasy alliance that is soon tested by old secrets shifting alliances and forbidding feelings as rusana and her band of tra deadly trackers loom ever closer the three fugitives must discover what they're each willing to sacrifice to save their own Okay, again, sounds really good. I'm a really big sucker of anything with like a squad or like a group of people who consider themselves family and they're like trying to fight for something. Uh, that's like, that, as soon as I hear something like that, I'm in. Two, I recently discovered that I really love the trope in fantasies where there's like a group or like race of people who have been like oppressed for years and the series is like where they start to fight back and really fight for their own power and fight back against their oppressors. I don't know how, why, but that really just draws me in. It's partially the reason why I love A Number of the Ashes and I think there's some other books in here that do that too that I love but it's something I've just discovered, so anything with that trope, and it sounds like this kind of has that with the crows, I am here for it. All right, next I have Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I figured since I liked Renegades, I would probably like Cinder, and I really wanted to check it out. Um, you probably already know what this is about, 
but I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis anyways. So humans and androids crowd the rush, raucous streets of New Beijing. A deadly plague ravages the population. From space, a ruthless lunar people watch, waiting to make their move, but no one knows that Earth's fate hinges on one girl. 16-year-old Cinder, a gifted mechanic, is a cyborg. She's a second-class citizen with a mysterious past and is reviled by her stepmother. But when her life becomes intertwined with the handsome Prince Kai's, she suddenly finds herself at the center of an intergalactic struggle and a forbidden attraction. Caught between duty and freedom, loyalty and betrayal, she must uncover secrets about her past in order to protect her fu world's future. Because there is something unusual about Cinder, something that others would kill for. So intriguing. I'm not really a big sci-fi person, but I'm willing to give this a chance because of the fact that I did love writing this. So I'm hyped to check this out. Also, these new covers they have coming out are really pretty, so that's kind of why I finally just caved and bought the book. All right, and then the last book I'm really looking forward to reading is There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. So I think it was Kay and then Chanel and then Aaron and then my one of my coworkers and then my other coworker all basically were the catalyst to me buying this because they kept talking about how good it was. And it kind of gives me Six of Crows vibes almost. I'm not definitely not comparing it so it's probably different, but I love anything with like a group of people trying to achieve something or competing in something. So let me just read you the synopsis and you'll get what I mean. For generations, the seven prophets used their visions of the future to end wars and unite nations until the day 100 years ago when they disappeared. All they left behind was one final secret prophecy foretelling an age of darkness and the birth of a new prophet who could be the world's salvation or the cause of its destruction. With chaos on the horizon, five lives are set on a collision course. A prince exiled from his kingdom, a ruthless killer known as the Pale Hand, a once faithful leader torn between his duty and his heart, a reckless gambler with the power to find anything or anyone, and a dying girl on the verge of giving up. One of them, or all of them, could break the world. Would they be savior or destroyer? So that sounds hype. Again, group of people trying to achieve something or somehow get intertwined in the story. I'm here for it. And honestly, this cover also just does it for me because it's literally all just gold. I love that. So excited for that. All right, so that is it. Those are all the books I'm excited for, such books that I have really loved reading this year in regards to YA fantasy. I'm really hoping that I will branch out more next year and read more fantasy because that would be awesome. But if you like the video, please go ahead and like it down below. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, please leave all that in the comment section. And if you're not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. Let me know some of your favorite YA fantasies because I might need to uh, get some recommendations. And if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe down below. You're all sunflowers in the world, please.